The first time I seen my mum, I was still on the run. And it was at me fight against Nathan Kelly. And Real it was fast, the yeah. only fight I ever lost. <laughs> so my mum comes to watch me fight for the first time and watch me lose. Yeah. And then I got arrested and sent straight to jail. <laughs> you can have the radio on at best. <laughs> He'd want to put fucking Radio City on. I'd want to put Classic FM on. Yeah. And we just have fucking... Classic FM? Yeah, that's what I listen to. Classic FM? Yeah, you never shadow box the classical music, man. <laughs> Does this look like a guy's... <laughs> I've shadow boxed, but I've lost every time, mate. That's it, yeah. You got a favourite composer? Mozart. Mozart. <laughs> So here I am, sat with the man himself, Mr. Shemrock. This is going to be an interview that dives a little deeper into the world, the life of Mr. Rock. Shem? What are we saying, Brian? Shem, what are we saying? Is there moments in your life, Shem, where you wake up in the morning and you kind of go, I'm Shemrock. <laughs> is there moments where you kind of just go, this, this is real. What's, what's it like waking up every day as Shemrock? I've always been Shemrock, so it's just normal for me, lad. Come on. Um... Look, you get to see from the blessed side before what life wasn't always blessed. Yeah. So it's good I've had the contrast before and now, and it makes me even more grateful for what I've got. Yeah. But times are good, what can I say? I'm here, I'm in Germany, I'm getting to fly around the world and punch people's heads in for the living, <laughs> so I can't complain. Did you ever think this would be your living? Like, what's because again, you talk about this, this, this moments where you look look back and the life before, what what happened during you being away for so long, and then now, did you ever think that even dare to dream that this could be your life? From the day that I found martial arts, I was completely deluded that I knew I was going to be here, and everyone around me would say the same thing. What are you on about, lad? You're on the run. You can't. You can't go and fight on these shows, or you can't even fly to to Europe. What are you talking about, mate? Or you're 22. How are you going to be competing with these guys who've been training since they were 12? All that just motivates me, lad. I'm the type of guy. If you tell me I can do it, I don't want it anymore. <laughs> it's too easy. <laughs> you you've got to make it hard for me. You've mm. got to tell me. No, you can't beat him. He's too good for you. Well, he, he's a better grappler, he's a better striker. And that's when I am want to show the world what I'm made of. I, I've just got that something in me, lad. And when I've got that will to fucking win, I can't be stopped. There's obviously the story that has been told. We've told it. We've, we've, and the people that maybe haven't been aware of it, the, the documentary we made, I think it's got nearly half a million views across all platforms. Of, of your story crazy. and it is the craziest story like from it's got more than that when you think about it because sometimes i'm just scrolling on tiktok and i see a video with like five million views and i'm like that's me <laughs> Who, who's this page why hasn't he tagged me where's the money <laughs> yeah do you get me where's the money <laughs> but the, the story again just just to to summarize it for people that that haven't maybe watched that or this may be the first taste of shamrock and like them being exposed to to you as a person from growing up in Liverpool and your normal being very different from everyone else's normal, the the world you lived in, the people around you, the type of stuff that was going on, to getting accused of this crime that you did not commit, the aggravated burglary, as were 22, right? 20 years old on the run? I think I was 19 when 19, I left. Yeah. yeah, 18, 19. I was 22 when I found martial arts. Yeah. So ni 19 years old, This all this stuff happens. You're in this world which... You know, people have a certain perception of you already. What, what was it? Was it fear that drove you to 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 leave? What, what was the? Because at nineteen, it's a huge thing to leave your mum, your friends, the world. You know, and especially with where you are, it's a very small, condensed. Like even you said, when you've you got out in the world, suddenly realizing Liverpool's not as big, or where you're from is not as big as it was. What, what was it like at nineteen to to have that f much fear? I suppose in your belly that you had to make that that choice. When I left. I honestly thought in my mind, and this is no diss on me city because I love Liverpool, I love Scousers, Salt of the Earth people, but I honestly believe that Liverpool's the best place in the world. I never want to leave. What do I want to go on holiday for? This is where I'm going to be for the rest of my life. So when I left, it wasn't because I wanted to see the world. I didn't want to leave, 
but I had no faith in Merseyside Police doing me any justice. I was 100% convinced I'm going to go there, it's going to be a jury that don't that look at me as a scumbag. It's going to be police saying all these mad things about me that aren't true. And it's going to be a 10 minute, yeah, done, jail, next case. And I'm going to be like, what? But I didn't even get to speak up. So in my mind, I thought, I'm going to go to jail for a crime that I haven't done. Nah, you got to catch me then. And I ran. And like I said, lad, I, I didn't think I was going to last more than two weeks. I thought, ah, they'll get me at the, get me at the border. I get past the border. Oh, they'll get me out when I land at the next country. I land at the next country. Ah, oh, they'll fly out and get me in a week. Two weeks pass by. I'm like, I've gone further than I thought. I'd go. What, what, what do I do now? <laughs> You've gone all the way around. You're back in Liverpool. This is it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's mad, lad. But I just believe everything happens for a reason. I believe that I was meant to go through that journey to make me the person I am, to make me character grow to who I am now, and to bring me where I am now as well. What about like, and again, because when we, we talk about this and when you talk about it, like you've obviously learned those lessons, you've, you've gone on that journey, you see where you are now. So it, it all has a meaning and a purpose, but there must have been points when you were that kid, that 19 year old, uh, and you, you didn't know what was next or, you know, where you were going to go. What, what, what were the, the darkest moments that, and again, this is, me trying to imagine even how that would feel i just feel like at that age even though you feel like you're a man right it's the world is a scary place especially when you're going places that don't speak your language or you know people might look at you different because you look different to them what 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 were the the darkest moments were there any, any points where i don't know what where, where did you get in your mind when some of those places or those thoughts came in well i've never prayed for the easy life I've prayed for strength and I believe that God put me through tough times to make me a strong man. Mm. And there was times where I can't see my mum, ain't seen her for seven, eight years. Merseyside police are kicking the door off every other week, taking pictures of men pulling up to the house saying it's me to get a warrant to kick the door off. After the door gets kicked off five, six times, the landlord evicts her. She's got nowhere to live. But I'm fighting in two weeks against former UFC veteran Rocky Lee in Taiwan and I'm flying out and I'm losing six, seven, eight kilos. But my mum's ringing me saying, I've got no money, I've got nowhere to live. You've caused this. But it's stressful, bro. Mm. It's stressful enough fighting. Yeah. That's, that's, the, that's the first and last time I can say as a grown man I cried. Mm. Trained with me professor for an hour straight and he just fucked me up for an hour straight. Slapped me, took me back, choked me out. And afterwards I cried. And he must have thought I cried because he just fucked me up. <laughs> but no one knew what I was going through. Yeah. Sometimes I'd, we don't really, as men, we're not the same as the other gender where we want to speak to someone and get it off our chest. Sometimes we hold it in. Maybe it's not the right thing to do, but that's the type of person I am. Lad. I'm not going to, oh, let me go and speak to a counsellor. Yeah. I mean, that's not the man I am, lad. And it was hard, lad. But like I said, I prayed for strength. So I had to go through these tough times and I honestly believe it would have broke a lot of people, but it just motivated me, lad. Like when I stepped in that cage to fight that two weeks later, you couldn't have stopped me. Mm -hmm. That I honestly think that was the most mental fortitude in the cage I've ever had. Like the, losing didn't matter to me then. Mm -hmm. Getting knocked out didn't matter to me then. It was bigger than that. I was literally like, I'm going to kill this guy. That could have been... That could have been Maisie Side Police in front of me, do you know what I mean? Like, I was just ready to kill. Yeah. And maybe that's what I needed to win that night. Maybe on another night he would have beat me. But that night, no one could have beat me. I believe that. You, you got such a special relationship with, with your mum. And I got to say, like seeing it and seeing you with her in Manchester for the first time, I've seen all the online stuff, the food, the Shem Scran, shout out to that. All the stuff is but you've got such a special bond with your mum. I think you've been through so much together away and, uh, you know, from those times to coming back together from the, the prison, the, the getting acquitted in 15 minutes from uh, the, the crime we didn't commit to then being back in her arms, in her house. What's it, what's it been like, you know, knowing that 
and even she said it that maybe you put her through some of that 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 those times being away what's it been like coping with that and looking at how everything that has affected your life that has given you strength has also had these ripples these effects which have bled into people that you love in their lives yeah i did put her through that and not only did i put her through that you've got to talk about the 15 years before that when i was doing what i shouldn't have been doing when I was a criminal or I was up to no good, my mum, my little brother, my aunties and uncles, obviously the representation of the family name. My family are proud people. Mm. My family are God-fearing people. Mm. So it's not exactly what they want to see from someone carrying the family name, a blood relative. And now that I'm on the flip side, it shows how proud they are of me, lad, and like where I've come from to where I am now. My mum's been through a lot, lad, and... That's why I want to give her the world and more, lad, because mm -hmm. fucking I owe her it. She fucking dragged me up a single mum, three of us by herself. So she deserves fucking more than what I can give her. What, well, um, because you talk about your, your brother then and your, your siblings, and now you, you live with your brother, he trains at Next Gen, right? Yeah. Do, do you feel like you you've got this position now with because of all you've been through and because of where you are stature and you know profile and the opportunities you've got do you feel like uh you are almost like their father figure as well i think so yeah yeah like i'm i'm the middle but it's almost like i'm the oldest right yeah um when i left my little brother was a child and when i come back he's a man wow and i went there to help shape him as a man He's grew up with another female raising him. At least when I grew up, early stages I had a father, later stages I had an older brother. Mm. He's grew up without that. So it's obviously been a lot harder for me little brother. Um, my little brother's been there through all of the tough times when I was doing what I was doing and when I was gone. He didn't have the choice to leave. He mm. was staying there with me mum. Um, People don't know, but he, he suffers with mental health. He's got PTSD from what's happened with all the Merseyside police. They've sued the police, they've won. And it's crazy because I honestly think now me coming back, my whole family say it to me like they've never seen him so happy. They see a different side to him. He trains with me every day. I think the training definitely helps with the, the mind. I think it's definitely improved his mental health. Yeah. Um, before he used to rely on smoking weed to come out of his his, yeah, his mental escape. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Where now he's not even smoking weed like that. He's training. He wants to be an athlete. He's he's even being like, I wouldn't mind competing one day. Obviously, he's not there yet. <laughs> <laughs> he's still got his demons that he has to fucking deal with, and he's his own man. But I'm here to support him in his journey, and I love me brother like I love me mum, lad. So I'll do anything for him as well. Yeah. You mentioned um, like like growing up. We've sort of we know the story of of your mum, and what what's what's the story with your dad now? Have you got a relationship there? What's what's that like? Is there anything that? You yeah, know? you know, my dad is my dad. He, he's fucking give birth to me, lad. Yeah, he gave birth to me. Didn't give birth to me. He he uh, I understand. Helped, yeah, yeah he, he created me. Um, me my father is actually with my older brother. Yeah, and they're in Asia. Still speak. Um, to, to, we, we've got. We're not an average family, Bry. We're not a normal family. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. We bit of an unconventional dad. He's not raised me how other dads raised their kids. <laughs> but he's, what do you mean by that? So go on, give like what 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 are the differences that you might not have noticed when you were younger, but now you look back and go, Jesus, that was that's, well, that's say, not normal. <laughs> if if I come home, yeah, and. My brother had been in a fight in school. My dad would go, did you win or did you lose? <laughs> and if my brother said he lost, well, I'd be getting in the car and going to the house. My dad would knock on the door and he'd go, get your son out here now and have my son a straightener. And I'm the younger brother. You what? So I'm fighting 15-year-olds when I'm fucking 10. Wow. <laughs> oh, my God. Really? And if I lose, he's going, baseball bat, go and get him next week, so I'm going back. <laughs> it was a different relationship, lads, you know what I'm saying? It was a different upbringing. But... He still gave me everything I needed. He was still there for me, still provided me. Yeah. Believe it or not, sent me to private school. It's probably why I've got a bit of a brain on my head. 
Um, but this is what I'm saying about my little brother because my little brother was later. Mm. He didn't get to experience having a father. He doesn't know his dad. He's never even met him other than when he was a child, but he don't remember. So like you said before, I almost am the father figure. I'm the only person making it income in the house. I pay for everything. I support my brother. I support my mum. Like all these fucking fans saying, ah, you live with your mum and making fun of me, but they don't realise what I do for them, lad. I could go and live on my own, but I don't want to. I get to fucking live with the people I love. Yeah. They might not have the same relationship with their family, so they don't understand it. But I think I've got the best life in the world right now. I get to be around my loved ones who I haven't seen for 10 years. I wouldn't change it for the world, lad. What, what, what was it like... Um... What was it like seeing your mum and your brother for the first time? What was it like when you, you were able to, you know, be a free man and, and go and, 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 you know, let's be honest, hug your mum? The first time I seen my mum, I was still on the run. And it was at me fight against Nathan Kelly. And Belfast, it was the yeah. only fight I ever lost. <laughs> so my mum comes to watch me fight for the first time and watch me lose. Yeah. And then I got arrested and sent straight to jail. <laughs> oh <my. laughs> so it was a bit of a mad time, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I said, lad, but I've no, been through just it. Tell me about that, because obviously she came to watch you fight. The fight is one story, and again, you always talk about learning less. You even said to me that you knew it kind of would happen, but you, you went there and, you know, you were just going to face it. Ten years away, all that time from your friends, your family, you wanted to just deal with it, get back there, get it done. But outside of that, there is the emotions of, you know, seeing those people, those people that you've maybe only had phone calls with before for a long time. What was it like when you, you first saw your mum? It was emotional, lad. It was a, probably not the thing you want on fight day before you're about to step in the cage. Yeah. But I didn't, even, I didn't even plan to see her. I planned to see her afterwards. And she was the first person I seen when I walked in the venue. <laughs> she was going to the bar and I was walking in. First person I seen was my wow. mum. What was that moment? Go on, what, like, what, what did you say? What did you do? What? She just cried, lad. She's a woman and she she just cried. And she's a mum. Yeah, she's a mum. Yeah. <laughs> and wouldn't let go of me. Had to peel her off me. On the hooks, get in there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And then I had to go back into the zone. Yeah. And fucking go backstage, warm up. Yeah. Get in there, fight. And then I didn't get to see her afterwards, which was a bit shit. So it was probably better that I did see her before. Maybe that was meant to be. Otherwise, the first time I would have seen her would have been on a visit in jail, lad. Yeah. Which definitely is an ideal, is it? What was the what was, um, first time you saw your brother? So what, what age did you leave him? What was the time you, you left him and what was the first time? Um, he's 22 now, so how old was he when I left? 11, 12 or something. Wow. Yeah, he was a kid. He was a proper kid. I remember seeing him and going, fucking hell, he's bigger than me. <laughs> he's about 93 kg when I left. He was a fucking little midget. He's the biggest out of all of us, probably. <laughs> the most athletically gifted as well. Really? Yeah. But yeah, I think first time I seen him was either there at the fight or on a visit in jail. I can't remember. I can't remember. Yeah. 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 Wasn't nice seeing him from jail, like. Yeah, of course. Yeah. My mum's like me. My mum's staunch. Yeah. My little brother's a bit softer, so he was crying on the visits. And I'm like, lad, what the fuck are you crying for, lad? I'm on the wing with other lads here. <laughs> can't have me fucking people crying on yeah. visits. Stop, lad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I get it, lad. It is what it is. It's hard to see the people you love in fucking... In that there. environment, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially when you know you shouldn't be there, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. What, um, what were those, what was life like? And you were there for how long? Six months? I've done six months on remand. I think just over six months, like a few yeah. extra days. Yeah. So six months. And uh, what, what I've, and again, tell me if I'm wrong, but what I, what I know of you or what I've experienced from you is, and I, again, I feel very lucky that I've, I've met you on, when you don't, you're not, just the showman where you're not just you know on fight week we've had those moments where we've had food or we've just been yeah. around so like I, it's one of the things i want to do this this podcast for because i want to show people the other side like it's it's a joy being around you and seeing your effect on other people but you've also got this shield this guard that does come up you know and Again, I can't even imagine it, but in, in prison, especially with your name, your reputation, the stories behind you, what, what was it like six months in there? Was it survival mode? Did you have to prove yourself? What were there, were there dark times, you know, where, I mean, what was it like? So you got to think like, this is the local jail in my city. Mm. I'm probably one of the biggest MMA fighters in my city. 
and not only that, the life I used to live before, I've probably got a name from that. Then I've got associates, family members who maybe are still in that life. So you land on the wing and the first thing you're doing is seeing who's on the wing to see if you've got a problem. Obviously it's a small city, everyone yeah. knows everyone. I know who I've got trouble with and I know who's fucking might want to cause a problem with me. So I had to almost, for the first time in my life, revert back to the guy I was. And um, it's weird to say it, lad, it was an easy switch to flip, mm. where I thought I'd never be that guy ever again. Mm. But it's almost like you're the fucking prey or you're the hunter, lad, and Shemrock's not prey, lad. <laughs> Um, there was altercations in there sometimes, there was a few things, but who the fuck wants to fight with the man who's fucking professional fighter and trained to fucking fight in a place where there's no guns, no weapons? As soon as I come on the wing, anyone who had a problem with me moved off the wing and went on the next wing. So that says it all. Um, like I said, it was only six months, so I'm not going to speak like I've done 10 years on a life as wing. <laughs> you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. But it wasn't nice, lad. We were during COVID, so even though the rest of the world was free, suddenly, if, if, if funnily enough, it was still, it was still COVID in jail. So we're 23 hours behind the door and only getting an hour out a day. So when you come out that hour a day, how do you think everyone is on the wing? Yeah. You think everyone's just chilled? Nah, yeah. people are angry, bro. People are vex. You, 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 as soon as you come out your pad, lad, you, you, your instincts are heightened and you're ready for whatever might happen. Um, but I was the boy on the wing, lad, so I was all right. Seen some mad things, had some mad moments, but God's got me back and I'm here safe and sound, so that's a point in my life I never want to go through again and I'm going to make sure I never do go through again. That's for certain. What, what, what was going through your head for 23 hours, locked in a cell? What were the things that got you through? What were the thoughts or the... The highest level. Of mixed martial arts. Yeah. Didn't have a TV. Didn't do nothing other than train. I mean, my pad made my own weights. I used to rob the mop poles, put them down my pant leg and fucking <laughs> hobble up the stairs and make weights. I used to shadow box. Me and my pad mate used to just punch fuck out of each other. My pad mate used to be like, lad, these tenders are on, just let me have the telly. <laughs> I'd pick up the telly and smash it. We're not watching telly in here. You can have the radio on at best. <laughs> He'd want to put fucking Radio City on. I'd want to put Classic FM on. Yeah. And we just have fucking... Classic FM? Yeah, that's what I listen to. Classic FM? Yeah, you never shadow box the classical music, man. <laughs> Does this look like a guy's... <laughs> I've shadow boxed, but I've lost every time, mate. That's it, yeah. So, yeah, the thing that got me through, lad, was just when I come out, lad, I just got a major chip on my shoulder, a major point to prove, and I just want to come and take everything from everyone and prove I'm the fucking best in the city and then after that prove I'm the best in the country and then after that prove I'm the best in Europe like I always set goals for myself and it's crazy because I always feel like I achieved them quicker than I thought I would mm. but once you achieve a goal then it's, it's the next goal it's the next goal I'm I'm motivated by chasing things I've got nothing to chase I get almost depressed okay. not depressed but I like, I'll just get that itch like I want to go. And that's what jail was for six months. Just like, let me chase me goal. Let me, let me achieve what I want to achieve. And them screws in there, dirty bastards didn't help. Like, they'd come, you get gym once a week. They'd come open your door, get to my door. Nah, next door. And I'd be like, why can't I go gym? Because they understand that, who I am and what I do. Obviously, it's no secret that they're all from my city. Most of the screws are from around my city. They, they know who I am. Um, they come to me cell, snap me my pole up, take it out, take me weights out, put me on basic, you're not allowed a TV, you're not getting a soch. But I, none of that breaks me, lad. I'd be like, well, fuck you then, I don't give a fuck. But like I said, lad, sometimes that shit just motivates me even more, lad. Just wants, I just want to prove a point to the world after that. And I'm sure them same cunts now are watching me fight. I can fucking guarantee you that. Going, I, I was, he was in my jail, in, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But there was there was the odd few that were all right in there. Uh, yeah. Used to give you a little bligh. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But any man who locks people behind the door for a living isn't one of my people. That's for certain. Classical FM. 
That's a <laughs> classic FM. FM. You got a favourite composer? Mozart. Mozart. Can't go wrong, can Can't you? Can't go wrong with a Beethoven. bit of Mozzie. Bit of Beethoven, yeah. 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 That's, uh, it's amazing. But that, that journey, that motivation, you look at where you are now, mate. You look at this this platform, you've got people that have watched your documentary. And I, I looked at the comments yesterday underneath that documentary. So many people talking about being inspired. So many people wanting to know more. So many people like telling a bit of their story as well. And what does that feel like? What does, does, does that add pressure? Does that, um, what is it, what's it like when people reach out and say that your story, this thing that happened to you is now helping them? It's crazy, lad, because the amount of messages I get on a daily basis, especially on like TikTok, which I, which I was surprised because I'm not really on that platform that much. They, they, they just give me some crazy messages like you changed my life or I've, I'm doing MMA because of what I seen you do and I, I wanted to kill myself two years ago and now I'm in a better place after seeing what you've done. Like you don't realize like how many, how many people's lives you can touch without ever even knowing them or meeting them. Mm. And even like in, in the everyday life, walking through my city and I'm like, wow, who's this staring at me? Why is he looking at me? And I'm thinking, wow, have we got a problem here? And then you come over like, I just want to let you know, I'm just a big fan. I've watched all your fights. Mm. I love your story. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep representing for the city. And then it hit me like, oh yeah, I forgot what I do for a second or who I am. Like, cause you, do you? Yeah, you wake up, yeah, shit. yeah, I don't know shit. any different, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, I love the fact that I'm inspiring people. But then there's also the opposite end as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it comes with both, do you know what yeah. I mean? You can't have yin without yang. You yeah. can't have good without bad. Yeah. It is what it is. But this, this is kind of what is unique about you because you are polarizing. You know I mean, you've, you've felt it in Octagon alone, right? You, there's fans that love you and behind you. And then there's fans that, you know, they're tuning in to kind of what you lose. They kind of, they want that. They want to see the downfall, not yeah. just that. Yeah. What's... What, what the, what's that like? Because I, I find it hard to believe that you're not aware of some of the stuff people say. And especially with, with your story, your background, people have a perception of who you are, you know, or even what your life might be like right now. Like, it's mad, it's mad when I tell people how picky you are with food and, like, even a bottle of water, you'll check to see what, what's... That's what what's, I did yeah, when you give yeah, me yeah, exactly, like that. Just check it out. Yeah. So people have this perception of you. Does, does any of it get to you? Any of it, like when you're getting the, the backlash from the Pacorni, uh, the fight coming off, th does any of it go further than skin deep? Do you know what, lad? The motivation messages are great, but I love the other ones more. <laughs> I really do, you know? Yeah. I think they get more of my attention as well. I think I reply to them more. I think I message them ones back more. Is that healthy though? Is that like, cause, cause then you're like absorbing negative energy and I you're think, only fueling I think, it. I think it just motivates me, lad. Yeah. I think, you know, after the training session, if you were like, Shem, you were great today. Shem, you were shit today, lad. Your guillotine was terrible. You need to wake up. Okay, coach, watch tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to wake this month. And that's the, it's like negative reinforcements or something like that. Do you think that's because you talk about your environment, you said there's a lot of negativity when you were young. Is that, is that just maybe because of that? Maybe because you're so used to absorbing that type of stuff that that's, that's your food now. That's what... I guess that's a job for me, fucking psychologist. psychologist. Right, put your yeah. feet up. Let's take yeah, you back. Let's... Yeah, yeah. Um, don't get me wrong, lad. Some people say some mad shit that I don't reply. Like the racism ones do me. I didn't. Yeah. People talking about me mum and that, but you can't get motivated by that because what 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 you say to that? But the yeah. ones where it's like your shit or your fight with Lima was terrible or you are boring. Yeah. Them, them ones get they, they me get out you. of bed to they you. Get you. Yeah, I, I was fucking, I was boring, wasn't I? In the pads. <laughs> <laughs> Watch the next fight. <laughs> but like I say though, all the time to all of the fucking, the, the up and coming lads, anything that is out of your control, you cannot let it take over your life and stress you. If I've got no control over it, what can I really do about it? Like, yeah, yeah. I just take all of that with a pinch of salt and just keep it moving because, like you said, the real people who I let in mm. past the barrier know the real me mm. and I'd value their opinion. If they come to me and said, Shem, you've changed, you're acting different, you're not the guy you used to be, Why you? then I'd be like, whoa, mm. something's up here. But these guys who are watching from afar, they don't know me from Adam. Yeah. They don't know what my favourite colour is. They don't know how picky I am with my food. <laughs> they don't know I carry a memory foam pillow through every airport. Like, 
I, I don't take their opinion too, yeah. too close to the heart. I'm Do not really that, bothered. That's wise. That's, that's a wise head. And this is, this is the other thing that I think, um, when I look at those 10 years that you were away, and then you came and you're now at Next Gen, you're kinda, you are kind of one of the more experienced, you're the one of the fighters that, and it's a mat full of killers and high achievers and a phenomenal gym. But you are one of the guys that people look up to. What, what's it like thinking about, you know, that 10 years being away for that amount of time, not able to train in a gym like that, which is, as you say, that, that your home, the, the, in, you know, many people's opinion, one of the best gyms, not just in the UK, in Europe, possibly the world. What, what, what do you think about that time that went over those 10 years? Do you, I know you don't regret it because it's where you are now, but you kind of wonder where you might be if, if you hadn't have had those, those, that time away. So, I watched them from afar, from a very young age, as a mixed martial arts fan first of all, before I'd ever trained, growing up watching your Cage Warriors, your Paddy, your um, Chris Fishgold, your Mollies. Mm. Like, I was watching them before I even trained. I, I've always loved watching fighting, whether it was MMA, whether it was the old school boxing, yeah. when it was your Prince and the Seams. Like, I, I, yeah. time. What a time. So I've been watching them and looking up to them. And then when I've started training myself, yeah, I wasn't in Liverpool training. I was over there, but I'm still on the mats. I'm training with Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belts from Brazil, fourth degree black belts. Mm. I've, had, I've had training partners from Iran, national wrestlers, being to, on the national team with Olympic athletes, trained with a load of Dagestanis, load of Arabs, loads of Asians, like a really mixed culture of different styles. I've got to travel and compete in so many different countries, see different cultures. What a life. Yeah. Right? But all of that shaped my game. Mm. So in the beginning, I was doing pure jiu-jitsu with pure jiu-jitsu guys, pure boxing with pure boxing guys, pure Muay Thai with pure Muay Thai guys. I honestly believe all of that give me a great foundation of fundamentals to then when I've come to the MMA gyms, when I first went to SBG, then when I've come to Next Gen, now I'm filling in the holes between yeah. to bring everything to MMA and shape me full round game. And I think I can honestly say now I am a mixed martial artist. Yeah. Where before it was like, I was a grappler with striking, who could wrestle? Yeah. Now I am a mixed martial artist. If you were to ask me what am I best at, it'd be MMA as a whole. Mm before it'd be jiu-jitsu or it'd be muay thai or it'd be and i think like i said everything happens for a reason i think that's what i needed for the progression to get me to where i am now yeah i probably touching the peak i've probably got four more years of peak shem obviously everyone's different i could be like yao romero and be 40. <laughs> who knows no one's like yao romero come <laughs> yeah. on no one's like yao romero <laughs> what well, so what's that four years look like in your head like you've you've Again, even you just saying it means that you've, you've almost marked it and it's realistic, right? This game is not, it's not a big window yeah. and anything can happen, injuries, all sorts can affect the game. What, what's, how will you sit back in four years' time, say you do hang the gloves up then? How will you look back and go, everything that I've been through, everything I've sacrificed, in, in your eyes, how will that put a smile on your face, not regret in your heart? I honestly think... I don't look past fighting. I've never thought about what will happen after, very rarely. Mm. Yeah, okay, maybe I'll go into coaching, maybe. But I'm not thinking about it, don't care about it. Right now, I'm focused on being the best, the best I can be. And four years' time might be time to hang up the gloves, but I know me, and I know I will keep doing this till the wheels fall <laughs> off. So when I should retire at 34, I'll probably retire at 38 after losing 10 fights in a row. <laughs> like. I just love to fight, right? Yeah. And it's going to take someone else to stop me to make me stop, I think. Really? Yeah, I don't think, I, I don't think I'm going to stop when it's time to stop. I okay. think I'm, I'm going to... Keep gonna, going. Yeah, yeah. I'm oh, going to wow. be like Tony Ferguson or something. <laughs> 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 I don't give a fuck, lad. Yeah. Um, but I think... But like, as far as achievements, what, what is... What will put that smile on your face? This, what, what, what do you think, you know? This yeah. is where I think I'm a bit weird. Like, when I speak to other people, they talk about titles. And they talk about wins. And I like looking at the pictures and looking at the videos. And 
I don't care about the, the gold, the medals, the title. I'm not bothered. I don't even know where my old belts are. I don't even know where my old jiu-jitsu medals are. I leave the competition, I throw them in the bin. And honestly, it doesn't do nothing wow. for me. I really don't care about it. I like meeting the new people, going abroad, training, the new cultures. The, the most important thing for me is the training. Like, if I could never fight again but keep training, I'd be happy. If I could only fight and not train, I'd be depressed as fuck. Really? For me, training's the most important thing. It's the thing that I value the most, yeah. the thing that I'm happy doing every day. Fighting is just me showcasing my skills. It's a product of what I've developed. If I couldn't fight, it wouldn't be the end of the world. I mm. could still be in the sport and I could still be happy. But looking back, I think it would probably be the actual fights themselves okay. where I've got to show Hey, Rim, remember we were drilling this for months and then I went and hit it in that fight. Mm. I remember I'd done that get-up that I never used to be good at, but you made me fucking drill it for six months and then I'd done it against the third degree black belt. Yeah. They're the things that I think that will stick with me. Um, it's very different. Yeah, it is. Like, like it? a lot of fighters, it's yeah. about those achievements, that gold, that belt, you know, that legacy. Okay. It's, it's, yeah. yeah. Unless it was made of solid gold, then, then yeah, yeah, give me the then, belt, I'll go sell it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Obviously, the, the, what happened in Manchester is something that took a fight away from everyone. Yeah. Right. That that incident with Picconi, the the weigh-ins, what what went through? And, and again, I know you, the, you felt the line was crossed. Again, he's a police officer, so he's already representing something that you got a big issue with, and that of course a big problem in your life. But what was that like after, you know, once the the, the dust had settled, to see that fight? disappear and also you were in the arena a lot of people were there for you what was that like sort of having to to deal with i think maybe people didn't realize the perception that i was going to receive in that arena people didn't understand because like the tickets are bought off the ticket master so mm. nobody it's not like i've got physical tickets and they go whoa shem's mm. brought two thousand fans yeah, yeah. so no one knew but i knew before and i knew like what i'm on the prelims are these sure? <laughs> like, everyone's going to be there for me, you know? Like, I knew that. There yeah. was no doubt in my mind. The one that shocked me was George Staines. He had fucking loads there. Yeah. Yeah. A little army, mate. Yeah. The whole, whole were in full effect. Yeah, there, I didn't mate. think yeah. people would travel that far. That's good. But I, I knew, like, I'm the draw. I'm going to bring the crowd here. And that's what disheartened me the most about that situation. That these people are hard-working, normal civilians who mm. go to work every day and have spent half a day paycheck to come and watch me fight mm. and now didn't get to do it. And I feel bad that I've took that money out of their pocket for no reason. And I, I say this, lad, I wish I could give them it back, but I fucking can't. <laughs> I'm not there yet, do you get me? <laughs> get on me in 10 years and I'll reimburse all these. <laughs> I owe you. Yeah. I owe you. So that's what was I was disappointed with the most and... When I look at the, what the fans say and I look at the comments saying everyone's sad and with Pocorny, I get it because majority of the fan base is from his region. Yeah. But people need to know what he was saying to me, lad. There's lines. Like, I get it. I was calling him a police officer and I was slagging him and I was slagging his skill set. I never talked about his mum. I never talked about his, his kids. I never talked about none of that shit. Mm. That was him. He opened that kind of worms and I told him, mind what you're saying. Because when you see me in real life, I'll keep the same energy. Mm. And then when he sees me in real life, he wants to be like, hey, hey, friendly fight. Nah, we're not having a friendly fight, mate. That, that, that line's being crossed. And it's the same what I was saying in the presser yesterday about Catacoli. When he's saying after he, after he knocks me out, I'm going to go back to bagel and houses. Like the certain things that you can't come back from. We won't be mates after this. Where if you keep it, yeah, you want to promote the fight. You want to say I'm shit. No problem. Afterwards. Go for the little bevy with you. I'll be on the waters. You can be on the Jack Daniels. <laughs> yeah. But once you cross the line, lad, yeah. that's out the window, bro. And that's why, even though what happened was bad, I don't feel bad for him. I don't care. He could have fought that night. I know he could have fought that night. I've kicked a thousand livers in my lifetime. And I'll tell you now, I did not touch rib. It was 100% soft. I hit all liver. I think he honestly seen a way out. He thought, I can go home. Maybe get me a little bit of show money and I don't have to get fucking killed by Shem. Because he knew. He knew when he seen me at that way in size on me, still not rehydrated yet. He must have thought, fuck, what am I in for here? You could feel the nervous energy from him. Face off, let's leave. Power had to call him back to be like, no, do your job, mate. Come back. Mm. I think 
we'll never see that fight. If you were to ask me genuine thoughts, and it won't be from my side, it'll be all from his side. Okay. I don't think he'll ever, ever show up against me. And if he does, it'll have to be on his terms, in his territory, and it'll be like, this is my last fight, fuck it. I'm going big or going home. Okay. But he'll be going home, <laughs> definitely. You mentioned your next fight, and before I talk about the fight, I want to talk about a moment that, that uh, was captured by somebody else, just a truck driver driving past uh, one of the billboards, which had your name on it in Birmingham, your, your quote, your face, huge billboard as he's driving past. And I, I heard something in the press conference where you say, I don't, I don't kind of celebrate things. I don't celebrate wins. I don't celebrate, you know, good training. I don't celebrate. You, you, you never sit back and give yourself those moments, but I, that must have hit you. That, you know, from, like you said, from the billboard, the wanted poster in the center of Liverpool, which people took a picture and sent you to you, yeah. to then a billboard, you know, advertising, not just... Coming for everyone. Yeah, coming for everyone. What, so, come on, you must... You, that, I took half a second to fucking look at it and be like, wow, that's sick, that. I sent it to Pavel and said, this made my day. Because <laughs> no one told me. Uh, no one even told yeah. me, like, you're up on the screen, you know. Yeah. It was a truck driver who actually trains at Next Gen going through Birmingham yeah. and seeing it and took a picture. Magic. And I think that was the best way for me to find out. Yeah, yeah. Rather than like, oh, by the way, we're going to put you on a billboard. Because then when it comes out, I'm expecting it. Yeah. It's like, it's not as big. The fact that I see it, I was like, what? Mum, that's me, you know. <laughs> Mum, we yeah. did it. We did it, Mum. Check your son. <laughs> Check your son. Get the scrans on. It was mad. But like I said, that's not to be celebrated yet. It's not that time. Why, why don't you celebrate? Like, and, and again, because you're the only one who can reward you for the work, the sacrifice, the achievements, the position you're in. Because it, it almost feels like you're missing the chance to. The job's not done, Bray. Okay. The job's not done. Yeah. It's not 20% done. Do you think the mailman celebrates every letter he delivers? No, mine he doesn't. Celebrates. Mine doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> he celebrates when he gets home and the job's done. Yes, finally done with work I'm not done yeah. I'm nowhere near done I'm just getting started and I celebrate them when I'm done then when I can look back and be like wow that was sick that yeah. wow I remember this wow I remember that now's not the time for remembrance now's the time for fucking work yeah. go achievements there's a lot to still be done and this next fight April 20th Resorts World Arena Birmingham Stefano Catacoli a lot of people didn't sign this fight Right. Why do you think? A lot of people didn't sign this fight, okay? And we know that it was offered to, to a fair few and some big names as well. He says he, he asked for this fight. He yeah. asked for it. Look. But he signed it. Listen, he, there's no he taking did. it away. He's, he he's at the pre he's, he he's signed, he's going to fight you. So however it came about, he is the one person that has put his, the ink on the paper to, to, to step in. He thinks he kind of knows a way to uh, unlock Shemrock. He was offered originally, earlier on, maybe 10 weeks out to fight. And he then started putting on social media, he was booked to fight. Spider-Man who's fighting tonight in Stuttgart. Spider-Man messaged me and said, lad, don't listen to this guy, I'm fighting Diego Czech. I'm not fighting him. So then I've gone back to him and said, I thought you were booked to fight. I am, I am, I am. It was only then four weeks later that he signed. So I don't know what's happened in that period. Did he grow some balls? Did Brad tell him something? Did someone blow smoke up his ass? Or did Octagon say, listen, mate, sign this contract or you're back to the B-League, son? I can't answer them questions. Only Catacoli can answer them questions. But getting the truth out of him is probably like getting blood out of a stone, lad. So only he knows and only he'll probably ever know. But it's, it's, it's almost a fight where he's got a lot to gain and you have oh, yeah. got a lot to lose, right? Yeah, Because yeah. the, the whole contract talks that were taken away, speculation of you going other places, the backlash from the Pecorni fight, the new contract that was signed, you know, big statements made as far as you coming back. We did it in the cage in Newcastle. Um, yeah, if I lose this, I'm in the gutter, aren't I, lads? What's that feel like, though? Like, that's, <laughs> that's what I love, guy. <laughs> People don't understand. Put the pressure on me. Let me bear the weight and I'll prove you all wrong. Like, that's what I want. He's finished. Ah, oh, he's past it. Ah, oh, he's too old. Ah, oh, he's not good enough. Ah, oh, he's not ready. Let me prove them then. Just let me go. Just point me in the direction and no one's stopping me, lad. I honestly think you're going to see a different me in there and I'm going to punch a hole through this guy and I'm going to go, I told yous. And everyone's going to go, fucking hell, not again. Okay, you won't do the next one, though. No. 
and that's what I want. Keep giving me that energy because it just keeps me motivated. I don't want the, oh, he's there, he's the best, oh, he's made it, he's, I don't want that. Doesn't do it for me, lad, and that's why I'm asking for the cunts who I can't beat, so I can beat them and show you as I can beat them. Why do you think I want to fight the best guys? Why do you think I want to fight the biggest names? Because I get out of bed in the morning like, fuck, I'm fighting Buckinger. He was fighting pro when I was fucking in nappies. That would be a fight. Yeah, these are I the fights I want. I would love that fight, dude. That but would be... They don't want me. Uh, do you know what I think it is a little bit? I think they see me on the mic as well and go, I can't be arsed dealing with him for 12 weeks. <laughs> Fuck off, lad. But, but when you sit next to Dennis Frimpong, everyone goes, no, I'd rather. He's all right, actually. <laughs> yeah, I like him now. Why do you think I bring him everywhere? I'm only messing. But I think it'd be a different contrast if I got book and get. I don't think it'd be like a... Uh, bad blood thing respect, he's, right? yeah that's he's a, a really nice fight. guy yeah, yeah. I do have respect for him I was watching him when I weren't even fighting on your cage warriors and them shows yeah, when he was fighting yeah. McGregor yeah it'd just be one of them that I want to show I'm the level I want to test me skills and when I beat him no one can deny me then these are the fights that motivate me the most so first stop though is Birmingham, Birmingham. first stop Stefano Cotacoli um What's the statement you want to make with, with this fight? What is the, you know, not just the prediction for the finish, but... Levels. I want people to go, wow. They look like two different weight classes, two different skill sets, two different sports. He's doing fucking badminton, I'm fighting. Like, these are going to think that these are brought to fucking any normal guy who doesn't train to step in there with a fucking serious killer. That's what I want people to say. I want people to say, like, that was a major mismatch. Because that's how it right. He's seven and one. I'm nine and one. It's not a mismatch. I just want to make people think it is when they see the levels, when they see the skill set, when I'm pinging them up on the feet, when I'm untouchable, I'm getting out there clean. And then when he tries to wrestle and I'm putting them on his back and I'm punching them on the ground and I'm taking his back and I'm putting them in submissions and people go, whoa, where's the path to, for victory for him? That's what I want people to say afterwards. And then it's like, I think we need to give this guy the step up he's asking for because we can't give him another one of them guys. That's what I want people to say. I can't wait to get you back in the cage and we have to get you in the cage, mate. Let's get past the weigh yeah. Let's yeah. get to the fight. We need some security, yeah? <laughs> Anyone who's above 265 pounds who's looking for a job, we've got two openings for security, keeping us apart. I'm not hating this guy. I'm making it to the fight. But... Let's see, does he make it to the fight? Okay. Because he signed the contract, but we're not there yet. Let's see, does he make it there? If he does, all respect to him. But I'm just seeing nervous energy, timidness, looking at the floor, eye twitches at the face off. Does he want to be here? Uh, I don't feel like he does. Well, we'll see. April 20th, yep. Resorts World Arena. Watch this man, theticketfactory.com. Get your ticket, Shem. Thank, Thank you. you. April 20th, Octagon 56 in the Resorts World Arena in Birmingham. Get your tickets now at theticketfactory.com.